is tea time. Cheers. I am Patricia Moore and I come on here week to week to spill my tea. My tea is my good news. It is things that I am learning as I am walking this journey, building my relationship with Christ. And I come on here to motivate you, to inspire you, to make you think and want to go build your own relationship. Get to know Jesus for yourself. Get to know the Father for yourself. What are we talking about? All right. This week, we're talking about counted all joy. Why are we talking about counting all joy? Glad you asked. Let's start with a scripture. Consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open. <laughs> don't not know about that. And it shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you can become mature and well-developed, not deficient in any way. That's James 1, 2 through 4, the message version. It is so many things you could pick apart in this scripture. First of all, he says, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into open. How many of us know that when we're going through pressure, we're fully exposed? I don't care if you try to hide. I don't care if you try to run. People are going to see whether or not you have a foundation or if you were planned it on sinking sand. Why? Because they can tell by your response, your behavior, how you act. They can tell whether or not you have a faith in God, whether you're standing on his word, whether you're believing, whether you are being the example of what the word says, because people watch more than you know, they watch and observe. It also says, don't try to get out of it. How many of us know if you don't pass the test, it doesn't matter where you go. As we said, it doesn't matter where you hide. It doesn't matter if you try to start all over again. That test is going to come back again because God created us. And he says, I have a work in you that I am going to finish. So regardless if you like it or not, you can prematurely try to get out of this test, but it's going to keep showing up and showing up and showing up. Why? Because it says, so you can become mature and well-developed. He doesn't want us to be deficient in any way. Uh, listen, I don't know about you if you ever broke down this scripture, but his word says it. So when you try to put your own hermeneutic, your own understanding on it, at the end of the day, the word is the word and it doesn't change. I know that this topic may be kind of difficult because it's like, I don't want joy. I don't want peace. I don't want happiness. Sometimes I don't even want you to pray for me. I don't want to hear the word because I am mad. I am upset right now. It's okay to say that. I'm hurting right now. I can't even see past this hurt. And you want to talk about some joy? How can I possibly count it all joy based on the way that I'm feeling? When you look around this world, there's wars. There's constant like media coming after our children to pervert them. The earth is dying and being depleted. People are turning on each other. Families are being broken up. Financial systems are failing. People's health are failing. I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. Turn on the news. You'll see it all. It seems like everything is going chaotic. And at the end of the day, it hurts. Pain hurts. I know that it does because we've all experienced pain. We know what it feels like. And in that moment, you're not like counting all joy, right? But the key word that you have to think about when I was reading this is, what is it why we can't count it joy? The world. We are looking at all of these circumstances through the lens of the world's view that is satan's idea that is satan's plan because he wants you to only view it through your pain your hurt what it looks like what's going on he doesn't want you to be able to see what's happening on the inside of you i know that everything that i've gone through when i sit back and think about it I can count it all joy. I have never in my life been this close to God. 
I have never had a relationship with him like I have now. There are things inside of me changing. The revelation knowledge, the understanding that I have of the scripture now, the people that I am meeting. I talk to people so many times. I'm like, I wouldn't even know you if I didn't go through this. We wouldn't even be having this conversation. I was with a women's group about a week ago and my God, the information that flowed, the nuggets you know, we came together to support what seemed like, what the enemy seemed like to be, he robbed her of a situation, robbed her of her future. But the truth is that God won. Because in the midst of that, we start talking about God. We start giving each other information. And how many of you know by the end, we were smiling, laughing, giving God the glory. And I just know if I hadn't went through my situation, I may not have ever made it to this women's group where we could pour into each other. So I do count it all joy. I count all joy the, the people God knew couldn't be in my life because where he's taking me, because that would be a distraction because I would spend most of my time on them versus on him. So when you look at it, through a different lens, when you look at it at what God is doing, when you look at his word and it says, let it do its work so you can become mature. When you meditate and just focus right there on what he's doing and not what's happening to you or around you, then you can say, God, I count it all joy. I count it all joy. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. James, in this quote, it says, and, um, a blog that I was reading, she wrote, she wrote, end quote, James is saying that when we go through trials, we should do so joyfully because ultimately it produces patience, endurance, and a stronger faith. Our trials are not pointless. God knows all things and is working every situation, even when it doesn't look like he's showing up, even when it doesn't seem like Hey, God, time is running out. Tomorrow, this is happening. He is working every situation, even the most painful situations. We can count it all joy. Why? Because we are being made more like Jesus. When you have the opportunity to look at what Jesus had to go through in order to get up on that cross, in order to save us, in order to sit by the Father, when you take your eyes off of what you have to do, even Jesus had to go away sometimes. And I talk about that all the time. Jesus had to get away. Is this an earpod? No. Jesus had to get away. My baby wants to join me. This is all real. Mama, mama, I'm not, I'm not going to join. So, uh, who earpod is this? That's Peyton. Peyton. Yeah. See? All the time. There's going to be something pulling you away. But this is a beautiful, 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 beautiful interruption, right? Because this is what happens in life. This is such a real example of what happens in life. As soon as you try to get focused on the Father, something comes to take your attention. But you know what you can do? Instead of looking at it like an interruption or a distraction, you can look at it like, look at the beauty in this. She gets to be a part of a moment in time. She gets to be a part of what I'm sharing with you. She gets to hear her mommy sharing about the glory of God. And so instead of me focusing on, oh my God, my video, I was giving you a message. I have to take my eyesight off the circumstance of what it is. And I have to look for the joy so I can count each moment as joy. And I don't miss these moments. Because he's developing me, he's growing me, and he's allowing me to share it so others can hear it and be a part of it. Hopefully one day, she'll take over after me. Right, Baisley? Whatever. But I hope that you get what I'm saying. We all go through situations. We all go through circumstances. We all hurt. Tell God, ouch. But then I want you to pray to him and say, Lord, help me to see the joy. Focus my eyes on you. Give me a new mindset. Purify my heart so that I can walk this kingdom thing out. I don't want to focus on the world because that's where I am. I'm looking at the world. And as long as I look at the world, I'll miss the joy. God, I don't want to miss the joy. I don't want to prematurely forfeit the development that you have for me. I want to mature. I want to grow. 
I want to get everything God wants to give me. I want God to change me from ratchet to righteous, right? I want him to take everything out of me. So it's joyful when God says, I want you to be an example of Jesus. Why? Because being Mommy, an example of Mommy. Jesus. Okay. Being an example of Jesus helps us to help others. Because we are the only tangible Shh. example Mom, on earth for other people to see. Mama. Mm -mm, I got to finish my video. No, wait, you can, you, you're you too loud. Okay, well, I was quieted down. We are the only example that people can see. We are the only example that people can see. And so he is trying to work in us that he is real. And the only way people are going to be real is if we allow him to finish in us a great work. And so we can tell everyone else why it is joyful why we should count it all joy all right this has been your real transparent tea time coming from this mom and this little girl cheers